close your eyes and watch your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and see where you feel the sensation of breathing. Allow your attention to settle right there. And keep it there as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Other things may be happening. People may be talking. Birds may be flying past, but you don't let that disturb you. You've got to get your mind centered. We're training the mind here. Because the mind, if it's well trained, can bring happiness. If it's not well trained, it can take anything and turn it into misery. We see this all around us. People get find things in life and yet they abuse them and misuse them, use them to mistreat other people. And so even though the conditions around them are fine, then they can still make themselves miserable. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who live in bad conditions, but because of the state of their mind, they're fine with those conditions. It all depends on the mind and how you approach things, how you look at things, what your attitudes are, and what your skills are in dealing with the mind. Because the mind can get out of control very easily, but if you can keep it under control, then you can train it to be a mind that brings you happiness. So here we're giving it something simple to do. Just stay with one thing and make the breath comfortable. That makes it more attractive to stay here. And see if you can keep it here. If you can't keep it here, that means that you've got a wild animal in your house. It can tear things apart and doesn't stay in your house. It goes out and disturbs the neighbors as well. In other words, your greed, your aversion, and delusion, if you don't have some control over them, they can make a mess of your own mind. They can make a mess of the neighborhood. So we're dealing with the mind right here as it moves just a little bit. You want to be able to see it, because greed, aversion, delusion, when they start out, they just move little bits. And then they build and build and build, and then they take over. If you can catch them when they're still small, then it's easy to deal with them. If you wait until they've started doing damage, well, the damage has been done. So you'll have to learn how to recognize when something is in the mind is going in a direction you don't want it to, you have to be able to say no. And getting the mind to be comfortable with the breath gives you a good, plans, <coughs> good place to stand and say no to those things. Because otherwise the temptation to go out and just look for a quick jolt of, jolt of pleasure is just too much. But if you've got a sense of well-being inside, when the mind gets to rest, the mind feels whole and healthy. And when the breath is comfortable, then the body feels soothed as well. That way you've got a good place to see things going on and understand yourself. Gain some control over your mind. And that way you can gain some more control over your life. Because it is the decisions you make really shape your life more than anything else. We tend to complain about what other people do, but what they can do to you is nothing compared to what you do in shaping your life. The real harm that they do is getting you to do something unskillful. So you have to learn how to resist that temptation. And if you're in control of what you're doing, then you're safe. Otherwise, who knows is going to take over? It's like you have this whole crowd inside the mind. And sometimes the crowd is surging off in one direction even though you, you don't want to go there. But you've been allowing these things to build up in the mind, and when they, the power gathers, then they take you off wherever they're going to go. So try to gain some control over what the mind is doing. That way your life gets more under control. You can direct your life in the direction you want. As the Buddha said, one of the greatest blessings in life is when you direct yourself in the right way. So stop and figure out where do you want your life to go. And then train your mind so that you can put all your energy into going to a place that's really for your own well-being and for the well-being of others. That's when you can say that the mind is properly trained. And it's no longer an enemy of, its, of itself. It's no longer a wild animal in the house. It's a civilized member of the family. <laughs>